This is a three step painting. And step number one, it's sketching. For this, I'm using black acrylic and a very thin brush. I am sketching the contour of my pug. When it comes to an art project, and even if this is a drawing, even if it's a charcoal, even if it's uh, oil, acrylic, you always have to make a sketch first to define what you have in mind. It is okay to change our mind later on, it is okay to modify our initial idea, but it is important to establish a starting point. That's why at the beginning we sketch what we want to represent. Now I'm working on the right eye and I'm filling uh, the inner part with black, but with all of this I'm going to leave some areas unpainted and I'm going to use the white that is already um, on my paper. I should have said this from the beginning, but you already found out that my support today is paper and the medium it's acrylic. For the other eye, I'm going to do the same thing. First, I am positioning the areas that are brighter and this represents the light reflection. Every time we are drawing or painting eyes, we also have to keep in mind that the eye reflects the light. So, for example, if we have a window or a lamp or any kind of bright source of light, that will be shown in a, as a reflection in the eye. My second step is coloring. Here you're gonna see me adding very strong color accents all over the place. I'm going to go mostly around the face feature and I will enhance it with some color accents. Here you're gonna see me using a very bright yellow on a thicker brush and I will go around the face. I've changed my brush here, I'm using a smaller one and with pink I'm going to define the area around the nose, the eyebrows, the eye, around the eye and around the face. Few more accents on the forehead, around the nose, and here on the other eye, around the face, Now I'm using a darker orange. In order to get this color, I used the pink that I had before and I added a little red and a little yellow. So that's how I got this color. Of course, you don't have to use exactly the colors that I'm using. You can very well use your own color palette and I'm pretty sure that it will look great. So, um, with this orange, I am adding more accents around the eye right now, on the top of the forehead, on the face, around the face, and on the ears, on both sides. To add more contrast, I've changed the color. I'm using a light blue. And uh, I have the same brush that I used before. I added some highlights on the eye and now I'm working the area around the nose and around the face. 
I'm filling the ears with blue. I will fill both ears, but first I want to stop a little bit and work this area around the eye. I'm adding more accents on the other eye. And around the nose area. Some accents on the forehead and the other ear. I'm using a darker blue for the mouth. In order to get this blue, I added more uh, ultramarine into my brighter blue that I used before. And I'm adding here a few accents around the nose. I am reshaping the nose. And to add a little depth, I'm going to put a few accents here around the eyes and on top of the ears. And the other ear too. A few accents here. And I will fill the area around the mouth with the same color. Now I have a different uh, kind of blue. I uh, mix some of my orange into the blue that I used before and I added a drop of white and I'm using a bigger brush and with this um, grayish blue I am adding my final layer of color. For the face contour I'm using a very watery blue I'm working around here and I'm filling other areas that need to be touched a little. For my final step I will define everything that I did before. First I had to wait for probably 30-40 minutes to make sure that everything is completely dry. It is mandatory to make sure that there is no water left at all in my paper. I'm using black only and I'm using a very thin brush. And with this, I'm going over each detail and I'm redefining it. I'm recoloring, reshaping. I am thinking the entire painting again. If you want, think of this step as adding frosting to a cake and this will change a good into a very good image.
I am reshaping the nose and I'm filling in one side with black and then I'm adding a few more accents around it. Underneath, I'm going to enhance that line. I'll put an accent on top and around the eye. I am adding a strong accent here to separate the head and the ear that it's behind. And I'm adding some separation here too. And a accent underneath the nose. And around the eye, I will add more creases. Even if I paint over that orange line and a part of a big part of it it's covered, I'm going to leave just a little bit visible so it can create a little bit of contrast in the eye. I am about to fill the entire area underneath the eye, but first I am shaping it a little bit. And I'm adding an accent in the corner and now I'm dragging this line down. For the other side of the face, I'm enhancing the eyes a little bit and I'm putting a stronger accent under the eye. Now I am contouring the mouth and the areas underneath. I'm adding a strong accent here and work a little bit on the side of the face. As I'm adding an accent underneath the face, I'm blending a little bit the color and I'm using my finger for this. So I'm just applying color and while it's still wet, I'm just dragging my finger over it and I spread it around, but it creates a gradient. So here I'm applying color around the nose and then I'm dragging it down. Now I'm dragging the color up and on the side for the face. And this will add shadow into the areas that I want more um, darkness. I'm applying a shadow on the other side of the face and around the eyes. I 
And lastly, I'm going to add some splashes. But for this, I cover the face because I don't want uh, any splashes on the face. I just want it a little bit around to create a negligent look. And this is my pug. I hope you like it. See you next time with another fun project. Bye bye.